Hey guys, I'm HP. This is Dr. Pink, and today's topic is jazz guitar, easy bebop exercises number one. The number one assumes there's going to be more than one, of course, because jazz and bebop in specific is a very um, complicated and intense genre. But today we're really starting from the very beginning, from the scratch, to understand how the whole thing works by following the arpeggios, by doing these ups and downs and you, you're gonna see doing approach notes and um, chromatic um, in, the, in between notes. Yo, before we get started, make sure to subscribe to my channel, hit the notification button and also join the HP Crazy Geek directly with the free member account in order to stay in touch with me and um, with the premium member account to support the work which me and Dr. Pink are doing for you guys. So, I created a little track here for you with an easy progression and we learned how to do this. and so on. We're going really from the very beginning, so let's get started. For this very first um, bebop exercises, I've chosen a really simple chord progression, and this is going to be a, a um, chord progression which comes and comes and comes in jazz all over again. It's a 2-5-1 progression in C, meaning we're in C major, we have D minor 7 to G7 to C major 7, so this is 2, 5, 1. If you don't understand this specific thing, please check, the ba check out the basic jazz guitar tutorial on my channel, because a, a little bit of stuff you already need to know, otherwise you have no chance to follow this tutorial, even <laughs> this is a beginner for bebop stuff. But, you know, a few things have to be assumed that you know what 2, 5, 1 is. And in this case, I've chosen a half bar uh, chord chain. So we have one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, and one. So that will be this progression. It could also work with the full bar uh, chord progression, like, but um, it's basically the same. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Which also comes in place, but the method is basically the same, and I've chosen the half bar thing because there it's um, more challenging and also more to learn. Good. So, I've chosen now, as I said, this root position here. And... Now the modes on the D minor is of course Dorian, which will be this this position here. When you play the mode or any scale exercise, try to when you play them one, one and two, make an accent on the end to get it get it more swingy. One and two and three. Because this already gives you a routine to get this laid back feeling, okay? So this will be D Dorian. The, uh, the associated arpeggio is the D minor 7 arpeggio, as uh, very important is this one here. This is D minor 7 arpeggio, okay? So root, triad, fifth. Flat seven root flat three five flat seven. Okay, so for the D minor seven, we have the arpeggio plus the mode. G seven, uh, it's mixolydian scale or mode. Here, well, some might say the same notes. There aren't. 
mm. because the there's different intervals and it's also integrated in an arpeggio so this is G Dorin mm. uh, not Dorin mixo sorry mixo arpeggio will be G7 root try it you can take this one or this fifth flat seven root triad fifth flat seven so this g7 arpeggio okay and on the c we have c union is this one here okay plus c major seven arpeggio root Try it, fifth, seven, root, try it, fifth, seven. So as the first exercise, you just play through the mode. Then the arpeggio, up and down. Then we go to the next, G. I can make up and down arpeggio and C this has to go automatically plus arpeggio okay so that's the basics to start with the exercise that you can play this now we have half bar half bar chord changes meaning as I said, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. This is a two, five, one progression, half bar, which is very common and it's very common in bebop. You have either half bar or full bar changes. Uh, as I said, the method is the same. Now, <coughs> first of all, um, then of the method to do this um, is to follow the arpeggios, okay? Half bar, D minor 7 will be 1 and 2 and and now to G7 1 and 2 and 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and and then C, 1 full bar 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and 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 opposite, down One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four. This already works. One, two. Okay as a first exercise but of course nobody will play it like this it is shuffled into each e into each other so mostly it's up down up down or down up down up okay so now comes a trick play we're starting on d minor seven play up now we go down we search the next note of the g7 arpeggio you can go either up or down doesn't really matter it's up upon to your choice but um, it's and then we're going back up now on the C major 7 or page of a wombo or we just make a half bar and then we make a pause so Or you start on another note, we can start here on the D7. Now we go down either from we go to the next note in G, it will be either this one or this one. This upon to your choice. Let's see how that sounds. This already sounds the way it should. One, two. 
Oops, I missed the start. One, two, three. All it sounds near to what we want to have. Okay. You can also make the opposite down up. Let's start here. You have, so you start with down, then you go up. So down, let's over here. Uh, then G up. C down. Or here. Or we start here. The best would be that you practice all possibilities, you know. I'm just showing how the whole thing works, but uh, I'm, I'm not going into all possibilities because there are too many. <laughs> yeah, so you can do now down, up, or you can do up, up, down, or up, up, up. You can even do up, 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 but then uh, space gets limited. Now we have finished, so we have to do up, up, down. So D minor to uh, G7, C down. Yeah. Or down, G down, C down. Let's see how that sounds. Now down. It works. But um, as I said on the guitar, uh, three octaves gets a bit tough in one position. So we're not pushing it too hard into advanced stuff. So that's one method. You can do this as exercise and it's for orientation, you know. Because at the end, if you play it like this, it's going to sound like an exercise, but this helps you a lot for the orientation. The next thing you can do is um, with, the, with, the, with the modes. If you go with the modes up, you can just go up here. We start here with the D minor. And now we want to go to the next one in G7, which will be the G here. Now we need to have an approach note. Otherwise, you don't get on the right spot. And there where the bebop note comes from, because you need this chromatic thing when you go upwards, that you just play up, you know. Uh, if Let's go further up. Same thing when you go from G7 now, Again, you have to have some chromatic note somewhere that it resolves properly to the C. So, so now we, we made all up. Or you can make up, down. When you go down, there's nothing to do. It resolves properly. If you, let's start here with the D. Now comes G properly on the G. Here comes the C properly on the C. So if you go down, there's nothing you need to do. But when you go up, you need to have the approach note somewhere. Okay. Let's do this now. Now down. So that's the method, basically. Or the, the these are the basics, how you create these typical lines. But of course, 
um, this is like the grid where you start to work. At the end of the day, um, there's more to come, of course, but this is the where you start from because it needs to have the arpeggios mm -hmm. as orientation points plus the mode as orientation point and get a feeling for this uh, for this coldring called this um, sheets of sound you know this up and down up and down that's a typical thing I mean th there's one point which can be discussed um, is this the way guitar, jazz guitar should sound alike? It's up to you to decide that. My personal opinion um, is another one. I think you have to not forget where the guitar comes from. It's coming from blues and also make it sound blues in traditional jazz. Sounds more bluesy, but when you go into bebop, then you have this stuff going on. <laughs> Yeah, and then when you have the, all the things together, then you can start to be creative in all this. But you don't play up and down all the time. You probably... guys these were the basic bebop exercises first the really basic one so this is the number one and i really strongly recommend if you want to go into bebop or jazz stuff work on this stuff i remember when my teacher when i studied music came with that stuff i didn't like it so much because i said i don't want to play this half bar changes i didn't i'm not this half bar um, changes guy it's not my sound, but it's the same when you do when you the method is exactly the same when you do full bar. When you go up, you have this chromatic approach in between. You follow the arpeggios. It's all the same, and when you do it in half half bar steps, um, it's more challenging, and you learn way more than doing it in full bar because then you can cheat a little bit and noodle a little bit around. But here, you really need to be determined to the arpeggios and the modes which are integrated in that and try all this up down down up 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 down 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 up try all this stuff till you feel comfortable with it and i'm just in one position now <laughs> do it first just in one position till you feel comfortable and then you do in the other position maybe another key um, maybe you know jamie ebersold that's uh, like a practice uh, it's um a jazz course was a very popular one in my times where I studied music. There was books and books and books over two, five, one progressions through all keys in different speeds. Um, that's the way you do it. I mean, depends upon you how far you want to take it. But today we set the first spot, the first stone for your bebop career on guitar. And... Um, I really recommend to take this these exercises series that you don't have to think about this stuff anymore because then you start getting free and then you can start being creative in this, you know. Because jazz is a very intellectual genre. You have to need to learn a lot through um, intellectual. But in the end, the good players, they play out of their guts. And you need to know this stuff so well that you don't need to think about it anymore and then you can start it and then you can start being creative in your playing good what more to say if you want to download this backing track it's more fun with the backing track it's available in the hp crazy git directory plus a few examples i wrote them for you as tabs um, if you need some more guidance, it's also available there for download for premium members. Please join with the f free member account, but to download the stuff, you need a premium member account. And there is the only social media channel which I really feed, so it's really worth being there and follow 
my news which I'm doing as an artist. Yeah, me and Dr. Pink are saying goodbye.